Hello viewers, I am Abdulgani Radwanullah in Yoda. We are here today again for Advanced Mathematical Method 1. And our topic of discourse is hypergeometric equation and functions. In our last class, we told ourselves that an hypergeometric equation is a second order differential equation of the form x x minus 1 y prime prime plus t minus r plus s plus 1 x y prime minus r s y equals to 0. We call this one equation 1. We told ourselves that this equation has two linearly independent solutions and those solutions are what we refer to as hypergeometric functions. We establish this by solving equation 1 at regular singular points using the method of flow Venus. We establish the following results. That the first solution, y1 of x equals summation k from 0 to infinity r sub s sub k s sub k divided by t sub k k factorial x raised to power k which is written in hypergeometric form as f r comma s semicolon t semicolon x we also give the second solution as y2 of x equals x raised to power 1 minus t summation k from 0 to infinity r plus 1 minus t sub k s plus 1 minus t sub k divided by 2 minus t sub k k factorial x raised to power k which is written in hypergeometric form as f r plus 1 minus t comma s plus 1 minus t semicolon 2 minus t semicolon x these two results were established in our last class using Frobenius method I will emphasize some certain things as far as the structure of the two solutions the two solutions are concerned number one we emphasize the fact that for hypergeometric function we must retain k factorial. k factorial must always be preserved. That's number one. Number two, we have r sub k, s sub k, t sub k, defining factorial function. In one of our previous classes, we have emphasized on what factorial function is all about. Some textbook call it pochama function. Recall that if I have a sub n, we say that this there must be n terms, product of n terms starting from a, and that gives us a a plus one, a plus two. It continues until we have a plus n minus one. That was the relation given as far as factorial function is concerned. Now we must realize one fact here that it is possible to write numbers before and after f to signify the number of parameters at numerator and at denominator. R, S are parameters at denominator. T is the parameter at denominator. Let us take for instance. Suppose I have Summation a1 sub k, a2 sub k, up to a n sub k, divided by b1 sub k, b2 sub k, up to b m sub k, k factorial x raised to power k k from 0 to infinity. 
in terms of hypergeometric function, we have f at numerator, we have n numbers of parameter. At denominator, we have m number of parameter. Then we write a1, a2, up to a n semicolon b1, b2, up to b m semicolon x. So this defines hyperbolic hypergeometric function, and in fact, this is what we refer to as generalization of hypergeometric function. We have n numbers of parameters at the numerator. We have n number of parameters at the denominator to define what we have as generalization of um, hypergeometric function. And that is what is signified here. n denotes the number of parameters at the numerator, while m denotes the number of parameters at the numerator. Technically, we are now saying that the two solutions of equation one can as well be written as two one since there are two parameters at the numerator and one parameter at the denominator R S semicolon T semicolon X. First off, for the purpose of our class, I will not bother you of writing two. 1, the number before it, I will just write f, then semicolon separates numerator and denominator. That is, the first semicolon here signifies that the parameter we have just before the semicolon are the parameters at numerator, while the, the, the parameter we have before second, col uh, second column denotes the number of parameters that we have at denominator. Now, let's take a particular property of a um, hypergeometric function that is very, very important. A very simple question that comes to mind before that is, is it possible that the role of R and S at numerators at, are interchange? Can we interchange their role such that S comes first and R comes second? Is it possible? And that takes us to the symmetric property because it is possible. Symmetric property. Symmetric property of hypergeometric function. The symmetric property says that the hypergeometric function of A, B, semicolon C, semicolon X is the same thing as hypergeometric function of B, comma, A, semicolon C, semicolon X. How do we establish this? It is very simple and straightforward. Let us establish what we have. So, proof. By definition, we have that hypergeometric function of A, B, semicolon C, semicolon X is given as summation K from 0 to infinity, A sub K, B sub K, divided by C sub K, K factorial must always be preserved, then X is power K. Now, since multiplication is commutative, a times b can as well be written as b times a. In this case, we have summation k from 0 to infinity, b sub k, a sub k, divided by c sub k, k factorial x to the power k, which now becomes f of b, comma a semicolon c semicolon x. And that gives the property called symmetric. That is, the role of A and B at numerator can actually be interchanged. Let's now consider some examples. Let's consider some examples. 
So in the example, we we'll try as much as possible to see how we can convert some given function to hypergeometric functions. That will be the focus of our example today. Let us take the following examples. Example. One. Express each of the following. as hyper geometric hyper geometric functions a x sine x against x b i have actan x against x c i have ln 1 plus x d we have ln 1 minus x, e, I have ln 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x, f, 1 plus x raised to power n, and then um, g is e raised to power x. Solution. How do we convert each of these functions into hypergeometric form. Very simple. The major focus will be that we write each of the given functions in terms of power series. That's the basic thing. Write x sine x over x in terms of power series. Write act and x divided by x in terms of power series. Basically, Taylor or McLaurin series. A1 plus x, the same thing, and all other given function that we have. So after doing that, then we write each of the parameter at numerator and denominator in terms of factorial function. If we can establish this, then we have converted the given function into hypergeometric functions. So let us start. A, I have x sine x divided by x. We want to convert this to hypergeometric form. How do we convert this? The first thing is, let us take x sine x. x sine x. What is the series form of x sine x? Of course, sometimes it's not always advisable to start cramming, cramming, cramming in mathematics. You must understand some basic thing through which you can determine some certain uh, series. Now here I will use integration approach. What function must be integrated to get x sine x? The function that must be integrated to get x sine x from our elementary calculus is 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared dx. If I integrate this, I'm going to have x sine x. So what we do now is we expand this one using binomial expansion, our basic binomial expansion. And before that, we turn this one 1 minus x squared raised to the power minus half dx. Law of indices. After which, we expand using binomial expansion. And that gives us 1 plus minus x squared. One plus minus half minus s squared plus minus half minus three over two minus s squared squared over two factorial plus minus half minus three over two minus five over two minus s squared raised to power three divided by three factorial plus it continues in that form. Now let us discuss what we have in that series. Okay, we need to integrate. As I forget. 
integral of the whole of this one dx. Now let us discuss the structure of that series. Number one, let's look at the negative. Negative here, negative here turns positive. We have a negative here, one, two, three. Then there are two negatives here, and that becomes even negative. That also turns positive. We have um, one, two, three, six negatives here. That also turns positive. So let us write this one in terms of series form, in compact form rather. We write the series in compact form. How do we write it? First of all, s square is to the power. That's that that that's the variable of the of the of the of the of the series to which the power is raised. Then denominator we maintain factorial. Then let us now discuss our numerator. So x sine x becomes integral summation. I have k factorial at the numerator from 0 to infinity. I also have x squared to the power of k. Now let us look at numerator. This is half. This is half multiplied by 3 divided by 2. If I add 1 to half, I will obtain 3 divided by 2. Don't forget that the negative are cancelled out. All the negatives, they are no longer there. Here I have 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 2 plus 1, 1 divided by 2 plus 2. This defines factorial functions of half. And that becomes half sub k. That is exactly what we have. x raised to the power 2k. Now, I can write this one as summation. k from 0 to infinity, half sub k, k factorial, integral of x to the power 2k dk. Why? Because the variable of the integration is x. So, half sub k, the factorial function of half and k factorial becomes constant, then we integrate s raised to the power 2k. Integrating that, we obtain summation k from 0 to infinity, half sub k divided by 2k plus 1, k factorial, x is by 2k plus 1. Having done that, what is the next line of action? Two things to be done. Number one, do not forget that the initial problem is x sine x divided by x. That's the initial function given. So we write it in that form. So that means that we need to divide both sides by x. That's number one. Then number two, we have had factorial function at numerator. We have k factorial at denominator, which must always be preserved. We have those one. The major obstacle is 2k plus 1. We need to write this one in terms of factorial function. How can we write this one in terms of factorial function? Let us continue and see the beauty of what we are trying to do. Now, x sine x divided by x becomes summation 1 divided by 2 sub k divided by 2k plus 1 k factorial x raised to the power 2k. Now, let us take 2k plus 1 out. The question now is, what number will its last term in terms of factorial function be 2k plus 1? Of course, um, such number exists, but let's look at it this way. Factor out 2 first. k plus half. Now let's consider this as the last term. k plus half. What term must we consider to get the last term of the factorial function as k plus half. Here, very simple. Let's go back to our basic definition. a sub k is a, a plus 1, a plus 2. Then we continue until we have a plus k minus 1. This is the term that is needed. So we are going to equate this to this to actually determine our a. Meaning that I have 
a plus k minus 1 is k plus half. And therefore, a is 3 divided by 2. So that means that 3 divided by 2 sub k will have k plus half as the last term. Let's see. Let us see. Let's see. Three divided by two sub k will give us three divided by two multiplied by five divided by two multiplied by seven divided by two. It continues until I have three divided by two plus k minus one. And three divided by two plus k minus one will eventually give us k plus half. And that is what we decide. However, don't forget that what we have ab initio is 2k plus 1, not k plus half. In order to get back to where we started from, we must get rid of 3 divided by 2, 5 divided by 2, 7 divided by 2, and so on. All this must be cancelled out except the term. Let me write the term just before k plus 2. That term will be useful, k minus half and k plus half. Okay? Let us now start the cancellation. Of course, I have 3 divided by 2 cancelled out. I have 5 divided by 2. I have 7 divided by 2. I continue until I cancel out k minus half. So, we have cancelled all this. We are now left with this. And there must be 2 that must multiply it. For us to get that 2, we multiply this particular spot by half. By so doing, at denominator, we have succeeded in defining half sub k. So that means that 3 divided by 2 sub k divided by half sub k will give 2k plus 1. I cannot make the necessary substitution now. Instead of writing 2k plus 1, I can now write... 3 factorial function of 3 divided by 2 divided by factorial function of half. And that is what we are going to make use as our substitution. K from 0 to infinity. So let us substitute. So this is written as summation. K from 0 to infinity. 1 divided by 2 sub k divided by 3 divided by 2 sub k divided by half sub k k factorial x to the power 2k then what do we have? we have summation to infinity 1 divided by 2 sub k 1 divided by 2 sub k divided by 3 divided by 2 sub k k factorial x to the power 2k you will now observe that the final step we have here, the last line, is already in form of the hypergeometric function. That's the definition of that hypergeometric function. So we can now write it as f into 1 over 2 comma 1 over 2 semicolon 3 divided by 2 semicolon x raised to power 2 and that is the representation of x sine x over x in terms of hyperbolic function. I want to believe you are following the steps. So let us move to the next question. Let's move to the next question. And the next question is um, Actan x divided by x. So we want to write this one as f a b semicolon c semicolon x. So we need to find what will replace a, what will replace b, and what is going to replace our c. Then our x, we also need to look at that. Not necessarily x, this is just dummy variable. x can change, it could be negative. It could be positive, it can take some other power, like we have seen it under uh, arc sine x divided by x that it takes 
power of 2. Okay, let me write it as x raised to the power d, at least. Plus or minus x raised to the power d. So, let us solve this. We are going to follow the same trend as we did for arc sine x divided by x. Let's take arc tan x. What function must be integrated to get this? Because from our elementary calculus, we have it as 1 plus x square dx. So write this one in terms of binomial expansion. In terms of binomial expansion, we have this as summation minus 1 raised to power k, 1 sub k divided by k factorial x raised to power 2k, k from 0 to infinity. Now we can integrate this since the variable of integration is x. So integrating x raised to power 2k, we obtain summation k from 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to power k, 1 sub k divided by 2k plus 1 k factorial x raised to the power 2k plus 1. Then what do we do? From there, divide both sides by x to have the originally given function. We have um, tan x divided by x equals summation minus 1 raised to the power k 1 sub k x raised to the power 2 into k all divided by 2k plus 1 k factorial then k from 0 to infinity we have that now fortunately for us 2k plus 1 has been discussed and the value I can combine these two together, 1 sub k, the value of that one is half sub k, and I have this one to be minus s squared raised to power k, divided by 3 over 2 sub k, k factorial, k from 0 to infinity. And finally, the hypergeometric representation of actan x divided by x becomes 1, semicolon half, semicolon half comma semicolon one comma half semicolon three over two semicolon minus x squared and that is the representation now for the sake of examination it is possible that the examiner write that the hypergeometric representation of actan x divided by x is given as f a b c plus or minus x to the power d. Find the value of a, b, c, and d. Of course, the value of a here becomes 1. The value of b is half. The value of c is 3 divided by 2. And the value of d is 2. Symmetric property could change the value of a and b. By symmetric property, my a could be half, because it is possible that the half starts. My b could be 1. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you get the right step and you get to the final answer. Let's take the next example. C. Let's take question C. Question C, we have lane 1 plus x. We want to write it in terms of f a, B, semicolon, C, semicolon, plus or minus, X is for D. We want to write it in that form. How can we establish that? We we'll still follow the same pattern. The series expansion, well, series expansion of lane 1 plus X, we we'll go by integration. That lane 1 plus X from our undergraduate calculus, elementary calculus, it's 1 divided by 1 plus x dx. Then use binomial expansion to convert that one 
and by binomial expansion, I have this one to be summation minus 1 raised power k, 1 sub k divided by k factorial x raised to power k. k from 0 to infinity, and I have the x. We cannot integrate. The integration gives, sorry, I have summation minus 1 raised power k factorial function of 1 divided by k factorial x is by k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. Now, so we are now left with changing k plus 1 to factorial form. We want to change k plus 1 to factorial form. It can be shown that it can be shown that k plus 1 is same as 2 factorial function of 2 divided by factorial function of 1. That can be established. So in that case, ln 1 plus x, this implies ln 1 plus x becomes x summation k from 0 to infinity minus 1 sub k minus 1 raised to power k rather 1 sub k 1 sub k divided by 2 sub k k factorial x raised to power k now observe that uh, this is x raised to power k plus 1 what we have done is to apply law of indices to ensure that we write sk plus 1 in product form so this becomes x summation this is minus 1 is per k and this is x is per k we can actually bring the two of them together applying the basic rule of exponent and that gives us minus x every two raised per k divided by 2 raised to power 2 sub k then k factorial k from 0 to infinity and finally the factor the hypergeometric representation of lin 1 plus x becomes 1 comma 1 semicolon 2 semicolon minus x and that's not the problem so i will leave the function in d and function f and g as exercise i will look at e now then we'll move to another subtopic as far as um, hypergeometry is concerned let us take it we have lean 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x. We want to write it as uh, f a b semicolon c semicolon plus or minus x is to our d. How do we write this in this one? Now let's start by applying the rule of indices to The given function. Sorry, rule of logarithm rather. We know that logarithm of quotient is the difference of logarithm. That is, ln 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x is ln 1 plus x minus ln 1 minus x. This is our elementary algebra in mathematics. Elementary algebra in mathematics. So, having done that, We transform ln 1 plus x and ln 1 minus x into series form. And to do that, the series form of this has been established as minus 1 raised to power k, 1 sub k, divided by um, divided by k plus 1 k factorial x is power k plus 1. 
k from 0 to infinity minus minus summation the series expansion of this through via McLaurin series or Taylor series is uh, minus 1 sub k divided by k plus 1 k factorial x is equal to k plus 1 k from 0 to infinity that's what we have now looking at the two, we can actually combine them together under the same summation. That is, observe that k plus 1 is common, k factorial is common, 1 sub k is common, that is factorial function of 1. Then we can write this as summation, k from 0 to infinity, minus 1 sub k, minus 1 is common, no? I have 1 sub k divided by k plus 1 k factorial into minus 1 sub k plus 1 everything x raised to power k plus 1. Now observe that 1 here remain constant while this one interchange sign as we begin the counting. Take for instance at k equals to 0, this becomes 2. At k equals to 1, this becomes 0. So we keep moving between 0 and 2, 0, 2, 0, 2. Now, another thing we need to know as far as this structure is concerned is that for every even power, for every even value of k, this gives us 2. For every odd value, of k, 